and let's open with prayer. Holy Trinity, today we pray for the world and especially for the people of Ukraine and Russia. Bless them with hope and peace. Today we pray for our country and especially for the recent refugees. Bless them with hope and peace. Today we pray for our city and especially for those who are homeless and have food insecurity. Bless them with hope and peace. Today we pray for each of us gathered here and especially for those who have a heavy heart. Bless them with hope and peace. Amen. Um, so our um, backup plan is a YouTube video from Dr. Symphony Bagul, and she is a modern day mystic and Episcopal priest, teacher of the centering and the mystical theology in which it is grounded. She's an emeritus faculty member at the Center for Action and Contemplative contemplation and author of numerous books. So I'm going to share her conversation. What's not to trust? <laughs> it's the only thing that's final and certain in the world. <laughs> but that comes to each one of us uh, in its own time. Uh, for me, it all begins within the, that, that deep and beautiful assurance whether I live or die, I am the Lord's. Nothing can fall out of God. Every quark, every atom is maintained. And while we may not have the form in beyond death that we have now, uh, it's not like we're lost or God's lost. Uh, that, so the, the deep connectivity will continue in whatever mode is uh, appropriate. And to get too far into that is speculation. Mm -hmm. But I would say that for sure, what death does then within that context of a gateway from life to greater life, is it, it ends the evasions. She it ends the fear. What? She didn't and, uh, I've been rereading You were trying to get back on. Louisa, you need to mute. Getting the death of Ivan Illich, which I read every year at Lent, because it's just such a beautiful story, that Tolstoy novella, that all the all his life this guy is trying to live a, a perfect, what I call a perfect Gen X kind of existence, you know. <laughs> the right models, the right, you know, the right job, the right friends, the right family, the right interior decor, uh, the, the right next move. And all of a sudden, he comes proper of the fact that at the age of 45, that he's developed some terrible thing that's just eating him out from the inside. Uh, and and it follows as, him, as he struggles and anguishes and fights and resists his death. And then just towards the end, after considerable screaming, he suddenly goes, Whoa! and he realizes that death is behind him. And he says, and where was death? Oh, there it is. Where was pain? Oh, there. But in the place, joy and freedom. And an end to evasions. The one thing that does die, the only thing that dies at death, as far as I can see, is the burden of carrying our ego self and mistaking it for our real self. So, clarity, freedom, uh, and to the extent that we've already patterned ourselves to turn toward, to entrust and not resist, to that extent, uh, we are met with the most extraordinary intimacy, tailor-made to our own conditions, our own state. Uh, so it's not, it's not a thing to be terrified. You know, that, that, or rather that if you're terrified of it, it's, it's really important to sit there and say, well, what part of me is terrified? Uh, the monks of the desert always said, sit in your cell and ponder the hour of your death. Not because it's morbid, 
but because it gives us a chance daily to separate the chaff from the wheat in our life. You know, we don't get distracted by the little things. We can stay a little bit more in tune with what will survive if we tend it in this life, if we don't go off track in this life with it, not for too long anyway, the, the deepest yearning of our heart, the deepest intuition of our, of our being about what we're given to do in this planet, uh, the deepest love, the deepest friendship, none of these things die. And uh, that I, like my beloved colleague Jim Finley, have had the experience of, of, of walking through the death of a beloved uh, and discovering, it's now, I've been, been at it for a quarter of a century now, that, that even a beloved is not taken away. And, and beloveds that have done spiritual work together uh, might be stunned at how lively and personal the interchange continues to be. You know, at one point when I was with, you know, you know, in some grief and talking, talking about like Mary Magdalene, I think, you know, I miss you, I miss your being, I miss your body, where are you? He says, your life is my body. Oh, you know, that, that how we live and how we feel accompanied by our beloveds and, and everyone has a beloved. It can be a, uh, it could be a human being of, of the gender of your choice. Uh, it can be a parrot, it could be a child, it can be a dog. Uh, but, but where that bond of love uh, exists, of a quality that's, that's beyond the pretentious and the ego bound, that quality continues to resonate. So truly, there's nothing to fear. Uh, again, as I do my work in uh, with the coronavirus and trying to get ready for whatever may be expected, it's the quiet working of the fact that the people have died for a long time before the coronavirus. And, you know, so many of my friends, you know, for each one of us, there comes an hour where you step up onto the diving board and jump off. Mm -hmm. Boom. And so the work is really in preparing ahead of time to, uh, to become intimate with that final jump. So that it is not an interruption, but a real gateway and passage. Thomas Keating used to say, my, my wonderful spiritual teacher, he says, we all die. The thing about the contemplative life is you get to start doing it 30 years or 30, 80 years ahead of time. So by the time the actual moment runs around, you're, you're ready. And you can live your life once again with death behind you which is the, the freedom. I mean, my own sort of short take is to the extent that we live our life from the heart now with utter integrity, death proves no interruption to identity. It's only when we have been patently chasing false gold that that terrible sense of disorientation sets in for a while, and even that is a short passage. Who we are is held in the love of God from before time. And as we lean into that now in life and taste it, uh, we'll be prepared to really see death as the, the fullness of being and not as the lessening of it. Okay. Um. I'm ready to sit in here, Do Dr. Cynthia. Hello and welcome to Conscious TV. I'm Renata oh, and sorry. today is Cynthia Porcho. Hello, Cynthia. Okay. Um, were you able to see the video? Okay. Well, I'd be interested in what your um, immediate reactions are. What would you like to share about, you know, something that spoke to you um, from her words of wisdom? Well, I, 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 I,
Ellie, one question I have is, is this, is the video going to be available on the website? It, it will be, the, the, this whole program is being recorded, so it should be within that, yeah. I need to hear it again. It was a lot yeah, well, would, would you like to, would you like me to share it again? Just listen to it? That would be great, yeah. Everybody okay with that? Okay, I'll, I'll see what I can do, Give, but be, be a little bit patient. <laughs> Thank you. What is trustworthy about death? What's not to trust? <laughs> it's the only thing that's final and certain in the world. <laughs> that uh, comes to each one of us uh, in its own time. Uh, for me, it all begins within the, that, that deep and beautiful assurance, whether I live or die, I am the Lord's. Nothing can fall out of God. Every quark, every atom is maintained. And while we may not have the form in beyond death that we have now, uh, it's not like we're lost or God's lost. Uh, that, so the, the deep connectivity will continue in whatever mode is uh, appropriate. And to get too far into that is speculation. But I would say that for sure, what death does then within that context of a gateway from life to greater life is it, it ends the evasions. It ends the fear. And uh, that I've been rereading the death of Ivan Illich, which I read every year at Lent, because it's just such a beautiful story, that Tolstoy novella, that all, the, all his life this guy is trying to live a, a perfect, what I call a perfect Gen X kind of existence, you know, <laughs> the right models, the right, you know, the right job, the right friends, the right family, the right interior decor, uh, um, were you able the, to get the right next you move. Come here, and come all here. of a sudden he comes proper to the fact that at the age of 45 that he's developed some terrible thing that's just eating him out from the inside. I figured you would know uh, that. And, I figured and you would know that you could come here. As he struggles and anguishes and fights and resists his death and then just towards the end after considerable screaming, he suddenly goes, Whoa! and he realizes that death is behind him. And he says, and where was death? Oh, there it is. Where was pain? Oh, there. But in the place, joy. And freedom. And an end to evasions. The one thing that does die, the only thing that dies at death, as far as I can see, is the burden of carrying our ego self and mistaking it for our real self. So clarity, freedom, uh, and to the extent that we've already patterned ourselves to turn toward, to entrust and not resist. To that extent, uh, we are met with the most extraordinary intimacy, tailor-made to our own conditions, our own state. Uh, so it's not, it's not a thing to be terrified, you know, that, that, or rather that if you're terrified of it, it's, it's really important to sit there and say, well, what part of me is terrified? Uh, the monks of the desert always said, sit in your cell and ponder the hour of your death, not because it's morbid, but because it gives us a chance daily to separate the chaff from the wheat in our life. You know, we don't get distracted by the little things. We can stay a little bit more in tune with what will survive if we tend it in this life, if we don't go off track in this life with it, not for too long anyway. The, the deepest yearning of our heart, the deepest intuition of our of our being about what we're given to do in this planet, uh, the deepest love, the deepest friendship, none of these things die. And uh, that I, like my beloved colleague Jim Finley, have had the experience of, of, of walking through the death of a beloved uh, and 
discovering it's now I've been, been at it for a quarter of a century now that, that even a beloved is not taken away and and beloveds that have done spiritual work together uh, might be stunned at how lively and personal the interchange continues to be you know at one point when I was with you know you know in some grief and talking talking about like Mary Magdalene, I did, you know, I miss you, I miss your being, I miss your body, where are you? He says, your life is my body. Oh, you know, that, that how we live and how we feel accompanied by our beloveds, and, and everyone has a beloved. It can be a, uh, it could be a human being of, of the gender of your choice. Uh, it can be a parent, it could be a child, it can be a dog. Uh, but but where that bond of love uh, exists of a quality that's that's beyond the pretentious and the ego bound, that quality continues to resonate. So truly, there's nothing to fear. Uh, again, as I do my work in uh, with a coronavirus and trying to get ready for whatever may be expected, it's the quiet working of the fact that the people have died for a long time before the coronavirus. And, you know, so many of my friends, you know, for each one of us, there comes an hour where you step up onto the diving board and jump off. Boom. And so the work is really in preparing ahead of time to, uh, to become intimate with that final jump. So that it is not an interruption but a real gateway and passage. Thomas Keating used to say, my, my wonderful spiritual teacher, he says, we all die. The thing about the contemplative life is you get to start doing it 30 years or 30, 80 years ahead of time. So by the time the actual moment runs around, you're, you're ready. And you can live your life once again with death behind you, which is the, the freedom. I mean, my own so short take is to the extent that we live our life from the heart now with utter integrity, death proves no interruption to identity. It's only when we have been patently chasing false gold that that terrible sense of disorientation sets in for a while, and even that is a short passage. Who we are is held in the love of God from before time. And as we lean into that now in life and taste it, uh, we'll be prepared to really see death as the, the fullness of being and not as the lessening of it. That packs a punch, doesn't it? So there is up there. Um, let me stop this video in just a moment. Hello. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, what what are your thoughts or questions that we could talk through together? Well, I'll let you think about that. But um, interestingly, the as you know, the title of this nurture class is um, intimacy and death and dying, and I listen, have listened to this video several times, and there's still new things that I take away. But uh, what I heard earlier this morning when I listened to it again, she used the word intimacy two times. And I was like, oh, wow, this is great. And the first time she said, you have to entrust the process of leaving behind your, you know, of, of dying now, of dying 30 years earlier than, than um, the physical death, and not resist it, and you will be met with the most extraordinary intimacy. What do you think she meant by that? One 
takeaway that that I had um, was that sense of how we are always held in love. And in a way, there is this sense of <clears throat> we were held in, we are held in love even before we're born. Mm -hmm. Even before we were a, a whisper in the womb of the woman who gave us birth, you know, we, we are held. And so there's this sense of continuity within the universe and continuity within ourselves. And then um, that that continues on. And so there's a comfort in that. Um, there's a great comfort in that. Um, and I never thought before of if you're doing spiritual work that you are learning the process of dying or the, that you are becoming your truest self. And so therefore sort of the whole idea of the stone that is being remade and refinished and or the gem that, that is ourselves is becoming more like itself herself ourself um and therefore the other trappings that may seem important are really not um so I, yeah, I just really resonate with what she said. Um, and I'll just say one more thing and then I'll shut up. <laughs> um, I do think it is still important to acknowledge and respond to the, the way that we do have deep grief when we lose the beloved. And that um, I don't really agree with totally spiritual, spiritualizing that process um, because we are human and um, loss and grief are very real. Thank you, Hetty. I, I hear what you're saying and um, I, I am not good at quoting scripture, but um, I, in our scripture passages for this Lenten season was, you know, the one about Lazarus dying. And, and I, the, my, my, the, the, the thing that really hit me in our scripture passages for this Lent season was Jesus wept. And how more human could you get than, you know, weeping over a beloved friend. So, um, there, there certainly is an important place for that grieving process um, in this journey. Other thoughts? I was uh, struck by the, I guess it's the title of her talk, Death is the Fullness of Being. And that gives me a lot to think about. <laughs> Yes. Just the being instead of just the opposite, the absence. <laughs> well, she talks about um, if you go through this process and, you know, dying before you die, as, as you will, um, she talks about what, what a great freedom there is if you can let go of your ego self and and become more your true self and i think that's that's where she says you become fullest in being when when you get to that place um where you've given up things things that are not important and you embrace um compassion and friendship and, you know, all of those things that uh, really do make us happy. I'm only expressing how I took it. <laughs> I'm not a theologian, of course. 
You know, I think uh, some of the time, uh, the older I get, I'm looking at a timeline and saying, what have I done in my life and how have I served and how have I not served? And, uh, you know, it's like, oh dear, I may not have much more time to really do the things that God wants me to do. So it's a timeline piece. And so you need a whole different perspective of growing into the fullness of being as, as uh, she's talking about, <clears throat> rather than I don't have that much time left to do and to quote, make my mark on the world to make it a better place. <laughs> and I, so it's a whole different, different way of, of looking at things. Yeah, I agree. I was really struck with her positivity, the smiling, the that she was so at ease with with the subject matter. Um, I was impressed. Mm -hmm. Louisa, you have to take your mute off. Unmute yourself. What? Give me the the name of the YouTube video so I can go back to it. Um, what, what I will do, well, first of all, that's a good student. Um, I have created a listing of the resources that I've used. Right. Uh, some, of, some of the ones are ones I have used in the past, but I put them on the list because they apply to the subject. Victoria is going to get those uploaded to our nurture uh, section of the website, but I will send them out to the people on this Zoom today and that you'll have, and Louisa, I'll include the this YouTube video. It'd be easier for me to put a link in it. I mean, that'd be easier for you, so. Well, that would be okay. more than okay. Thank you. Okay. I've got many of her books, and I'm sure they have cross-references on them. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't, I don't have a book. I just came across it through the, um, I do the Richard War um, daily meditations uh, almost every day, and that's how I've right. come across this. I wanted to just say something about um, uh, a sense of how do we incorporate this into our lives, the idea of um, concentrating on our, be our being rather than, as Linda said, our doing. Um, and one of the things, one of the phrases that kind of sticks with me, um, Cynthia didn't say this, but um, in the end, we are all just walking each other home. And so from the sense of this is not a journey alone. It's a journey with God. It's also a journey with um, the people around us. And um, as Cynthia mentioned, if you've done spiritual work with someone, that enhances your <clears throat> sense of being with the person once they have died. How do we as a church walk each other home? In the sense of agape love for each other. Hedy, I, I love that question and, and that, I didn't phrase it in that way as I was, was doing uh, this research, uh, but it was kind of the end goal. How can we, be, the end goal for me was to learn for myself, but also as a church, how can we be more intimate in the death and dying of, of our friends and fellow church people? So there's some exciting things to come that that will help, you know, some ideas of, of how to help that, uh, or that might be appropriate for some people, maybe not everybody, but that's okay. 
Did, has anybody read the Ivan Illich book she referenced? I, I had too much reading to do, so I haven't done it either, but it, it's very, it intrigues me a lot uh, that that's something that she reads every year uh, at this time, of, at this season. Any other comments? I, I, I sense that you're really processing what, what you've heard and haven't, you know, that, that you need that time before you can really um, draw, it, draw many conclusions or takeaways. Well, here, go ahead, Lisa. I'm fascinated by, and the more I process it, this is very true. I just never thought about it this way. Um, is that, well, of course, we know theologically that we are loved by God and nothing can separate us from that love. Um, I've never thought about it death as a well when you make the passage that you experience joy because it's because death is already behind you i just figured i wasn't going to experience anything um so that whole idea of getting rid of all the busy stuff and all the junk that we fill up our time with um is so much less important. So what if I don't get the bed made? So what? And I'm kind of sitting here processing all that because I spend a lot of time taking me longer and longer and longer to do this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so looking at death as a passage, but that this walking each other home idea that Hetty put forth gives it a totally different feel and just a different slant. And I'm very grateful for not only Cynthia, but for, for Hetty's input. I, I really agree. I thought I thought the phrase "walking each other home" is is just beautiful, um, and you know it's it could lead into a whole other type of class uh, or conversation or coffee hour or something. So, thank you. To I agree. Thank you, Hetty. I had one other thought that feels a little humorous. I just never thought of death as jumping off the high dive. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is something you intentionally do and think of exhilaration that you feel. It's like, oh, okay. I've thought of it more as floating into oblivion. <laughs> um, and at that point of death, we're not even capable of jumping off, but maybe we're maybe we're, we could learn to think of it in that direction of something that is, um, as you said, Louisa, more positive and, uh, and the fullness of our being. How against what the whole world has taught us, even that our religion has taught us. Yeah, I, I really get the, the part that she says, I mean, the, the conclusion that she is, 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 you know, if you get this death thing behind you, what freedom you have? I mean, what a release. You just, you know, it's, it's all good. Ellie, one of our friends out here who died, I don't know, a year or two ago, out here being Sunnyside, um, always talked about it as looking forward to her greatest next adventure. Mm -hmm. 
which yeah it is. But you know, when I was doing this, I, I don't remember the name Louisa, but your 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 and Bill's friend uh, who was at Sunnyside and and in healthcare, and and you were very compassionate toward her, and I think were there actually when she died. Yeah, and she and you know, in in your in our conversations about her, it was clear that that's exactly how she looked at it. Uh, I mean, she was just ready and prepared. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'm going to leave you with. Um, I appreciate your patience today. I, again, I I apologize. Um, I hope we can figure this, do better at this, and I'll certainly do my part to work on that. Um, but this is this is from. Uh, I think from one of Richard Rohr's meditations that has Cynthia's writing in it. Um, so this is one paragraph. To the extent that we live our life from the heart now with utter integrity, death proves to be no interruption to identity. Who we are is held in the love of God from before time. And as we lean into that, into that now in life and taste it, we will be prepared to really see death as the fullness of being and not as the lessening of it. Great summary. I'll put that in, in your email to, or the link to that, um, okay. that particular Richard War thing. Well, thank you all. I appreciate seeing you. Um, Does that, uh, Ellie, I would, wanted to say what you just said. Does anyone hear in that an echo of the phrase that we frequently hear in memorial services or funeral services? The that in in this death, this person's baptism has been completed. Right. And that you know that's. Yeah, I kind of have that the sense of what that means, but I have a hard time putting it into into words to say that. I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, I'm with that. Souls, uh, baptism has now been completed in their death. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be a good um, a good topic to have more discussion about. I think because it, I I'm not real clear exactly what it means. Maybe on our last, um, as we have it scheduled in our last time together, um, it's a time for questions and uh, things that pe are on people's minds. So maybe that can come up. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. The sun is shining and the, uh, it looks much better than it did yesterday. And uh, just stay safe and um, and thank you, thanks again for coming. Well, thank Bye. You, thank you, Ellie. Yeah. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Thank you.